Happy Wednesday, guys. Hope you guys are having a great week, you guys and gals. So we are moving on with this thing. The last thing you saw was, I think on Monday, you saw me uh, doing some more power carving, and then I said I was gonna kinda smooth out all the way around the edge. So let me show you what we got going next. I, I don't wanna waste any time. I wanna get right into it. So hang on. I'm filming this by myself, so hang on, and I'm gonna zoom in here and show you what's next. We'll be right back. So remember early on when I said I wanted to, that I was going to come back to those spots that where it was kind of uneven that I was using the spiral up cut that I wanted to get rid of. Let me see if I can point it out. Oops, that was a little tall. I want to get rid of those that stuff in there, kind of smooth that all out. Well, let me show you what we're going to do. So. I got some more and I had also said that I was, had more stuff coming from cuts all. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my little Dremel and I got four little new uh, rotary tools that will fit in my Dremel. The one I have in there right now is the, the sphere. And I've tried them all, and for what I want to do, the sphere seems to be the one that works the best. So these are all the original, you can see they say the original course. Again, that's the ball nose, the uh, dovetail, the rotor saw, and then the sphere, which is the one that I actually have in the Dremel right there. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to get set up. We're going to come back and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so here I want to show you something. When I first started kind of envisioning how I wanted this thing to look, one thing that I didn't want is I didn't want, see how that's kind of a sharp edge there? And that's obviously as close as I could get with the, with the angle grinder and the big, uh, the big discs. But what I really wanted is I wanted this to blend in. I wanted that to be able to kind of just be a roll and blend in. So let me show you what I've already started. If you look down here in this area, see how that, I, this is kind of what I wanted. So I was able to go in there and kind of smooth that stuff out. And then this just kind of rolls in and blends in, especially like on the end. So I have, I have worked with, the, like I say, I tried all four different of those rotary tools. And the one that worked the best for what the effect I wanted was the little, um, the sphere. So I'll show you exactly how I do that. I'll kind of just kind of work my way down. I'll set up and we'll get into it right now.
All right, so I hope you guys could kind of see what I was doing there. I was just going in and kind of cleaning that area up and trying to get that to blend in a little bit. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed with that, um, because that's a coarse tool, if it still is a little rough, do you guys remember I showed these a while back? These are those sanding sticks. Uh, very, very handy. And I've used these uh, many times and they're really, really handy if you have a, a tight spot that you have to get into and sand. And there's a lots of cool sanding tools to get in there and sand. So these work really good for just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is this uh, micro zip that uh, I we use all the time. This is probably even a better way to do it. But this micro zip works really good for sanding that. Even this, this whole surface here, if I want to smooth that down, it works really, really well. That micro zip, and it has four different grits that come with that, that you can smooth all that down if you want to. Um, so uh, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I don't want, you know, I don't want this to be really super time consuming for you guys so I am going to um, I'm going to do most of the rest of this off camera and go all the way around and just you know smooth all this down and kind of blend that in get it all smooth and then when we come back we'll get into the next step all right folks so we are back so what I've done is I've spent a couple hours sorry about the rocky uh, <laughs> tripod here it's kind of rocky on the ground here anyway I've spent a couple hours just smoothing all those sharp edges down and what I was really looking for um, like uh, let's say in this area right here I was looking for to have a slope rather than that sharp edge that I was getting when I was doing it with the the disc and those little cuts all tools for my Dremel worked fantastic actually love them they work just like I hope they would and this thing is coming out so far just like I want it so the next step is I need to sand off all of that resin on the surface of those letters and I will explain that as soon as we get the sanding all done I'll explain why I need to do that so we'll be right back with some sanding step guys I've got two uh, knots that this definitely needs some uh, stabilizing and then this little one over here too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the star bond medium thick black because I, I want to kind of just blend that in um, and I have used this oh I wanted to show you that I've used this red tape on the back side to keep it from uh, hopefully from leaking through too bad hopefully at all if all goes right so it may take uh, two or three two or three times to uh, to get this thing all stabilized I don't need to completely fill it up but I definitely want to stabilize it make sure it's not uh, moving around on me and I want to make sure that I um, not only stabilize it but fill it to the point where when I put my my pour on my um, my resin pour that it doesn't leak through to the back that it that doesn't become a black hole so to speak that was that just kind of came out of nowhere 
This one I don't think goes through to the back, but again, I just want to make sure that those get filled good enough so that when I put my resin on that it doesn't soak through there and then come out the back side. So I'm going to do this a few more times, kind of make sure that everything is filled up a little bit there. Then we're going to come back and we're going to get into the next step. So stick with us. All right, here we go. Now, so we've got, uh, I've got that Starbond fill done on my black. Now what I got to do is because there's so many checks and cracks and stuff in here, I've got to fill that stuff up. If I don't, then when I do my flood pour, it's going to be a nightmare. And I oh, learned bright. that from experience, huh? Oh, it's just bright. I'm just trying to... Oh, um, so I am going to, uh, I've got uh, four ounces. I'm using, obviously, the Total Boat uh, High Performance. I've got four ounces of the resin, and I'm going to add two ounces of the hardener to that. And then we are going to do something way different. So let me add this two ounces here. And I've got my beautiful assistant behind the camera keeping track for me. So uh, what we're going to do, <clears throat> actually, you know what? Let me mix this for a few minutes off camera. Then when we come back, we'll be ready to uh, fill up those cracks. So, we've got six ounces of resin hardener ready to go. Resin hardener? Well, it's resin and hardener. Oh. So it's... Resin hardener. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's ready to go. Now, here's what I'm going to do that's different. This is something that we learned from Andrew up at uh, Reclaim Secrets, who is a master literally a master at resin work. What he does, because of all of the tables and different things he does, he uses a mixture of sawdust and resin uh, and makes kind of a paste out of it. And um, we've seen him do this and it's amazing. If I was just to take this resin and pour down in there, it would just fall in there and it would take forever to fill it up. So this is sawdust that I took from the ground off of, uh, or the concrete out there, right off of here. So it is this sawdust, this Gamble Oak, and Vicki was gracious enough to donate a kitchen utensil, which now belongs to me. So the fact that that was, you know, I'm sure that had nothing to do with it. She was eager to donate. So, all right, so here's what my plan is. I've never done this before. Oh, I want sawdust in first. Vicky's shaking her head no. So I want a little bit of sawdust in here. Guys, you're going to learn this with me because I've never done this before. I have. I'm going to put a little bit of sawdust in there, and I'm going to pour a little bit of resin, and I'm going to mix it up and see. Now what Andrew had told me, and Vicky will correct me if I'm wrong, is you want it kind of like the consistency of uh, peanut butter. Isn't that what he said? Right? So see that? Hold on. Kind of looks like poop in a cup. Okay. <laughs> you know somebody was thinking that, so I just had to say it. All right. So now let's just see if this stuff, uh, I should have moved these out of the way. So the idea is you get you know, you're filling up those cracks and uh, the fact that it's hollow underneath really doesn't make a difference. Oop, I'm flinging. I'm flinging. See? Vicky's in the room. Oh, you're blaming me? <laughs> I actually hit my skin there. So after this dries, then obviously, guys, I'll need to do some I'm sorry, I'm watching you and I've got the camera going all over the place. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, yes. see? So uh, what I was saying is after this dries, then I will need to sand it again, obviously. But again, the whole idea is that we fill up all these cracks so that we don't have uh, tons of bubbles coming out 
when we do our flood pour. That's that's the idea. And the, the sawdust hopefully will uh, will See be a there. nice blend. That's what we're hoping for. Huh? What? Use your finger. My bingo? <laughs> Vicky's Vicky's wanting me to use my finger rather than. Yeah, well you can kind of push it down into the wood. I can push it. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Look who's pushing. You're pushing my buttons. Actually, that it looks like that will save me some by See, doing that. Hello. I hope all this stuff sands off. Just don't cover up that little blue streak you got there. That's... All right. So I think you guys can kind of get the idea. I'm on a on a time crunch here because I got to get all this stuff filled before this resin starts setting up, and it's about 105 degrees out here. So, I am going to do exactly what you just saw me there for the rest of the board, and I'm sure Vicky will put on gloves and help me out. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll be back. When we come back, uh, we'll see what this thing looks like. So, we'll be back in a sec. All right, folks, there it is. We have got all of that resin paste basically on there. It is in the process of drying right now. And then we're going to come back on the next video. And I'm hoping that one more video and we'll have this thing all done. My plan is to uh, come back on the next video, which will be on Monday. And I will get that sanded off. I'm probably going to sand all that, uh, all that extra resin sawdust mixture, sand that off with the disc sander so I'll do that on Monday then we will get into pouring the resin over the top so let me come around behind the camera because I am by myself again and end this thing up all right there we are so Thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, we love you, and uh, I hope this isn't dragging on too long for you guys. It's just there's a lot of processes here. This is the first time I've ever done a project like this, doing some stuff I've never done before. Hopefully, you guys are learning something from it and enjoying what we're doing. I'm having a blast with it. This power carving thing, man, I've already got a lot of plans uh, for the future. Anyway, uh, on one special note, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to put in the uh, uh, caption in here right now in case you haven't heard we have uh, the website is completely redone so our website makeawoodsign.com just has a completely different look to it now and we actually have a free course seven steps uh, what is it seven steps basics of sign carving something like that seven basic steps of sign carving something like that Anyway, I'll put it down here. When you go to the new website, you'll see it on there, a big, uh, a big kind of a box that you click on, and you can go over to where we have the course on there. It's completely free. All you got to do is enter your email, and it's completely free, in case you guys haven't seen it yet. Anyway. A lot of people are watching it, getting a lot out of it. So I'd really love for you guys to go watch it. Let me know what you think. And uh, I want to do more courses in the future, more stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I don't plan on charging for anything anytime soon. It's all going to be free, just like it is here on YouTube. We've got almost 1,200 videos now, which is totally incredible. Anyway, uh, I can't believe we have that much to talk about and you guys keep watching so thanks again guys we love you if you have any questions on anything please email me directly eric at makeawoodsign.com hope you guys are having a great week and we will see you on monday bye bye